What's going on YouTube? Gator coming back at you with a minty fresh new episode of 413 Outdoors. Today's video is actually a request from a fellow YouTuber and a subscriber of mine named Musky Hans. Go check him out. Today we're going to be learning how to tie a check style nymph. It's a super easy pattern that makes for an incredible caddis imitation. One of the best I've found. Let's get into what you'll need. So the materials you're going to need to tie this fly are a size 10, either a curved or a swimming nymph hook. You can of course scale it up or down to suit your needs. We're going to have our bobbin spooled up with flat waxed 6 out thread. I'm tying this in black, but of course if you want to use something else to suit your conditions, that's fine too. Remember, fly patterns are flexible. You're going to need some sort of a monofilament tippet material. I tie these in 4x, but if you have something a little larger or a little smaller, that'll be just fine. This isn't something that's going to be under any kind of strain. We're going to be using this as a ribbing material. So old material or material that's not of the best quality will work absolutely fine for this application. You're going to need some good quality hair's ear dubbing. Now it's imperative that you have hair's ear dubbing. Other types won't work as well for this type of pattern. You're going to need some kind of a clear backing material. I use this eighth inch scud backing for this size fly, but if you don't have access to this, you can use, I've seen people use cut up surgical gloves or cut up plastic bags to do the same effect. Just if you have this material or if you can get this material, this is the best. If not, there's workarounds. And then finally, we're going to need a black Sharpie to polish this all off. I almost forgot to mention that you're also going to need some 10,000 sled wire and some thin gold tinsel. Now, if you want a heavier sinking fly, you can bump this up to either a 2 or a 20 or a 30,000 lead wire, but most of the streams I fish are pretty slow moving, so 10,000 actually works just fine for me. A little bit more materials than what we've been previously dealing with, and it's a little, little bit above the other patterns we've been tying, but it's not that hard, and I think everybody is going to enjoy this tie. So let's jump into the vice view and get started. All right, so without further ado, let's get into tying this fly. I'm going to start off by wrapping some of this ten thousandths lead wire down the shank of the fly. Making sure to get nice, even wraps. As I've said before, the key to getting good looking flies is to keep your wraps even. Otherwise, you end up with a bumpy looking fly. So I'll probably speed this up as I'm going through this. I'm going to bring it all the way back to here, and I'll speed this up starting right about now. Okay, got my lead wire here. I'm just going to break my tag off on the back. Okay, that's prettied up. So I'm going to start my thread here, as you would with any fly. Bring her on back. Oop. Get yourself all caught up on the point of your hook. That's a vital step. I'm just going to make a couple, couple passes over this lead wire here. I want to make sure that it's on there really well and it's not going to go sliding around and cause me problems later on down the road. All right, I've got approximately four or five passes over it. So now I'm going to bring my thread to the back here. I'm going to tie in my tipping material here. Making sure to run it up the entire length of the fly. And on this fly this has a two-fold purpose. I'm tying it up the entire length of the fly. Oop, just broke my thread. Let me get the thread back through the bobbin and I'll get back to you. Okay, got my thread restarted here. And I've just gone through and made a couple more passes over this tip of material. 
But as I was saying before, there's a twofold purpose for this. One is to obviously keep our body smooth like we've been talking about. The other is since this is a very slippery material, I want to make sure I have as much friction as possible holding this onto the fly. Next thing we're going to do, is we're going to tie in our tinsel. Same thing, bring it up the fly. Wrap it down very well. Now you'll only need three inches at most of that tinsel material, most likely less, but I like to be conservative in my estimates and um or I like to be very liberal with my estimates and overshoot the amount I'm going to need because it's always easier to cut a little bit off of the tag than it is to go in and add more. What we're going to do next is going to tie in our scud body, our clear backing material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a rough measurement of how long my fly is. I'm going to cut it off approximately a, qu a quarter to a half of an inch longer than I actually need. That gives me a little bit of room to play. Like I said with the um, like I said with the tinsel, you want to have overshoot your estimates. And now one of the tricks to actually getting this material to stay on is you're going to take it. Am I in frame there? There I am. You're actually going to make two little nicks in either side of it, like so. I don't know if you can see that very well. Right there. You see how there's a nick on either side? What that's going to do is that's going to allow our line to slip into those little knocks and really bind it down because otherwise this stuff is impossible to keep tied down. It just wants to slide all over the place. You see that? You see how it bit down there? That's what we're looking for. So then I'm going to take this, bring it up the fly, tie everything down really well and bring it back to where I was with the rest of my materials. Make a couple passes up and down the fly just to smooth everything out, keep it nice and tidy. I'm going to bring my thread back to my starting point here. The next step is going to be to dub the fly. Now I'm going to be dubbing this fly using a Dark Olive's Hair's Ear. What is it called? Yeah, it's just called Olive's Hair's Ear through the, um, through the hairline company. But this is a very, very important part of the fly. You have to have this hair's ear dubbing or else you won't get the right effect. All right, so now I'm going to start dubbing the fly like we have in numerous other patterns. Do, 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 do. Make my dubbing noodle on my line here. Keep it as tight as I can. And I'm just going to work that up the body of this fly. Stopping every couple times. Give it a little twist. Makes everything nice and tidy. Yep, right there. Needs a twist. And now this shaggy look here is what you want. It, no, I know it doesn't look very pretty as of yet, but once it all comes together, it, it is a very, very fine looking fly. Going to carry my dubbing on up. Had to add a little bit more. I undershot with my estimate. Oop. I'm going to cut this um, tipping material off here because it's 
causing me a lot of grief at the moment. Back, make a little head. And we have a very, very roughly dubbed body. Give that a quick little spin. Get any loose anything off. And I know that that looks like a hot mess right now. But trust me, it'll all come together. Next, I'm going to take some black hair's ear dubbing. I'm going to add that in. I'm just going to dub the front of my fly just like that. Give them a little black head. If you've ever seen caddis in the wild, you'll notice that they aren't completely green. They actually have either a little brown or a little black head. In my area, they tend towards black. Okay, so my next step here is going to be to take this gold tinsel that we tied in earlier. I'm going to wrap this up. Polymer it up the body like we did with the streamer. If you haven't seen how we tied the streamer, I suggest you go check that out. We're using a lot of the same techniques on this fly as we did on that one. And then we stop at our black here. You notice how I have even segments up and then I stop at the black. I'm going to pass that under the head. And I'm going to tie that down at the eye of the hook. Now the reason for that is that if you can see we have nice seg even segments but we don't have any gold on the head except for underneath there which is not going to be a um which is not going to be seen by the fish or at least it shouldn't be this is a bottom pattern it shouldn't ever be seen so that's just a little tip to make these look better so then next what we're going to do is we're going to take our scud back and the way i like to put this material on because it is a huge pain is to tie it on like that and then I'll take it keep it level on onto the back of the fly there and pull it tight then I'll go back give it a couple more wraps half hitch for security and trim off most of my tag you want to leave a little bit of tag just in case it does pull itself out then you can go back and fix it so, to finish this fly off in our last step here, it's going to be to take our tip of material, we're going to polymer it up over this fly, creating these really, really nice segments. And you want to polymer your tip of material up in between the tinsel material that you already brought up the fly. And then same as the tinsel material, go back behind the head like that, underneath the head, and we'll tie this off. All tied off now, we can go through and trim our tag off. A little bit of a thread head and then we can go back and trim the rest of that scud body off because after you have that tip of material on it's very unlikely that it'll pull itself loose all right let's tie it off half itch for security and then i'm just going to whip finish my fly here off my excess thread I'm then going to take our black sharpie here I'm going to color that scud backing in black And I prefer a Sharpie because it's a very alcoholy, watery marker. So it gives you a neat modeled pattern once it dries because it doesn't like to stick to this material so it gets all weird. 
And as you can see, we have a very, very nice back on our flat now. Then to finish this up, I'm just going to go through and trim off some of the really ridiculous guard hairs of the dubbing. And then we get to the fun part that really makes us pop. Okay, so for a little finishing touch here, I'm going to take a little strip of Velcro that I have. I'm going to get up in there and I'm going to run it forward, run it back, side to side, really pluck out those hairs. Now, of course, if you want to do this with your bobbin, if you're old school, you can do it that way too. It works. I just really, after trying this method, I think it's a lot more effective and gives you a lot nicer finished product than plucking out with a bobbin wood. So to finish this off, I'm going to come through here and just trim the legs even. And there you have it folks, I wanted to give you the piece of paper as a backdrop just so you can have some good contrast here. But as you can see we have little legs which was done by the segment and the dubbing. We have our little feeler legs out in the front here. We have a nice mottled looking back. We have a very dark head and we have a very natural looking shape. Alright everybody, that's all that there is to tying this fly. I hope you learned something and I hope you apply this pattern to your own fishing. Now I'm going to put a button up there and that's going to be a playlist of all of my fly tying videos. You can go through and watch them all, learn a whole bunch of new patterns, hopefully some new techniques. And if you click that button right there, if you're new to the channel, that'll subscribe you. Help me get to 5,000 subs. That would be absolutely phenomenal. So on that note, my name's Gator, and I'll see you later. Goodbye and God bless.